Soon and very soon, I will be dead. A second ago, I was shot in the back by a police officer or a rival gang member or a stray bullet or a trigger-happy neighbor on neighborhood watch. In the end, it doesn't matter what or who killed me because their race or verdict won't bring me back to life. I just want you to know before I bleed to death that I don't want to be your victim. I want my death to save a life. So don't be sad. Don't just give my mama money to feed your bleeding heart. Instead, please get angry. Get angry enough to act. Harass and make demands from your mayor, your congressperson, your president, until they feel the weight of your rage. March for me in streets stained with my blood and let pyres of guns and bullets burn on corners to light my vigil. Then, if you have some faith left, scream my name to a loving God until the earth trembles, until your voice box cracks in your throat, or at least until one night goes by in this country where another black youth does not become a casualty on the evening news. Look at me. I am worth a million stars. I am not a face hidden in a hoodie, a ruffian with a rebellious past, a rap lyric, a hustler hanging with the wrong crowd, a hoodlum with his pants hanging down to his knees, a crackhead or a felon. Look deeper. I am not your greatest fear. Look me in the eyes. I am a man. Soon and very soon, I will preach hate over the pulpit. Since the president expressed his support for gay marriage, my church has been up in arms. Some arms are raised in the form of questions, some are raised in the form of fists, and a few are praising God. But I must be resolute for I am the reverend, and no matter what I feel in my bones, I must do what's best for the church body. I must preach hate, because in this case, what's love got to do with it? If I waver, I will be labeled a hypocrite, scriptures will be spat at me, I will be stoned with gossip and cut with eyes that look for the faggot in my walk, my voice, my clothes. I will see a sudden emptiness in the collection plate, and in the pews. I don't have the heart to tell people that Jesus was a revolutionary in a dress. That's too much history for people living in the past. Nor do I have the mind to teach them that the same dogma used to enslave black people is the same being used to oppress the LGBT community. I don't even have the guts to stand up for the hundreds of homosexuals that attend my church the male choir director whose feminine energy allows his arms to uplift the choir, or the masculine female usher whose warm voice guides parishioners to their seats. It must be hard to hide one's true self in a closet, to beat one's brain in with a good book and kill off all chance at love for the sake of salvation. But didn't Jesus come to set people free? No. No, I must not question. People expect me to have all the answers. I must stand on others and not for them because it brings me closer to heaven and far from hell. And I can't go to hell. That is my greatest fear. Look me in the eyes, church, because I can't look at myself. I am not a man. Soon and very soon, you will be asked to vote me back into office. And whether you pick me or not, chances are I'll win. Despite the fact that I did not conduct enough miracles during my first term, I will again execute the office of President of the United States because people think I'm a magic Negro. They think I can pull a rabbit from my fist bump. How else do you explain their strange fascination with my birth certificate, my smoking addiction, the wrong things my previous pastor Reverend Wright said a decade ago, my wife's clothes, my Nigerian grandmother's citizenship, and the lie that my wife disrespected the flag at the 9-11 memorial. 
They can't find enough skeletons in my closet, so I must be a magician. I'm definitely not a community organizer because I can't even organize Congress around a bill. Though, let's face it, how many powerful white men do you know who are eager to take commands from a confident black man with a white mama? People don't know quite what to make of me, but they still expect me to make magic. Boost an economy in three years that took eight to sink, punish Wall Street for bad business, even though the system is designed to protect them or implode, shelter them from the terrorists lurking under their beds. Be blacker, Mr. President, even though you're biracial. Be Christian and don't ask or tell about gays. Be poorer and stop taking your family on vacation. You killed bin Laden, won the Nobel, and sung Al Green at the Apollo. You're cool, Barry. We dig it. Now stop. Give us the hope and change you promised. We voted for you. That wasn't enough. Well, you want us to do our part, too? And to that I say, yes. Please. Look me in the eyes, America. You have nothing to fear. I am the hope and the promise of slaves. I am the man. Who are you, America? That's the question Center Stage asked when we commissioned these 50 monologues. Want to learn more? Keep watching.